Hey guys, welcome to another video on the Microsoft Agent Framework. Today we're going to be tackling how to publish to your users, and specifically we're going to look at an example journey using the M365 Agents SDK and publishing an example simple bot out to Teams. So yeah, let's get started. Great. So before we jump into VS Code, I wanted to show you a little bit of how this is going to look when this agent has been published out to Microsoft 365 Copilot and then also in Microsoft Teams. So what we have here, basically gone to uh, Copilot's homepage, and here is our kind of main canvas for interacting with M365 Copilot. And if I was to prompt it now, we would basically get a sort of a grounded response in data from Microsoft Graph, SharePoint, emails, Teams messages, all of that kind of productivity stuff. But what I can also do from the same canvas is also talk directly to one of the custom agents that I've uploaded. And one of those being the uh, the Microsoft 365 Agents SDK Basic, uh, which, uh, yeah, I think probably is not going to win any prizes for creativity, but uh, does exactly what it says on the tin. So I can basically at mention it, and then I'm going to uh, select that. And then we can just, you know, fire off a prompt, and it's that message is going to get dynamically routed and start a session with our custom agent that we've built. So let's try how would I deploy a M365 agent. And yeah, as you can see, we actually get a response back pretty quickly. And we get that content streamed to us. And yeah, all in all, I would say it feels like quite a, a nice, smooth, fluid journey from using the regular M365 Copilot with this custom agent that's then been built with the Microsoft Agent Framework. And I, yeah, I think also the it's very it's pretty quick this box is you know not a huge amount going on. It's got one MCP tool, which is the the Microsoft Learn server um, MCP tool, and a very very light prompt. But as I just say, hopefully, sort of shows the sort of art of the possible in terms of being able to bring this into Copilot. And as I say, I think it's really helpful to be able to bring in our custom agents into the same space or the sort of same. It feels a bit like an agent marketplace uh, where we can add these into. And obviously it's, you know, it's in the same sort of um, sphere that our users are already working in, which is, which is great. What we can also do, we can just explicitly select this agent and start a session here as well. So we've got our starter prompts and I'm just going to fire this one off. How do I get started with developing applications for Microsoft 365 and Teams? And yeah, off it goes. And there we have it, it's going to be streamed back to us. So yeah, it's it's obviously we don't have the levels of control that we would do for a, a UI within you know a custom web app, but I do think this is a, is a really scalable way, way to uh, you know publish your agents out to your users. What we can also do is interact with this same agent, but directly within a Teams chat. So you can see that I've already started off uh, a few samples here. But we've got the same ability to go and view some starter prompts. So which one should we try? Let's go for AI and Copilot integration. Why not? And again, you can see we get that nice streaming response. Off it goes and brings the content back. Now, what I would say is that this is a relatively you know, beginner example. And you can really go to town with the Microsoft 365 Agents SDK to make this experience you know a little bit more compelling and kind of a little bit more interactive so some of those things where you can you can bring in citations for content that you've gone and fetched you know from a um, using using retrieval augmented generation or you can also bring in things like adaptive cards like for call to actions and kind of formatting data from i don't know from dataverse or from dynamics for example and then also you can add in things like suggested actions so Again, you can kind of do a lot to kind of guide the user a little bit more. But as I say, I think it's a you know it's it's very quick to stream the content, and it feels like a you know a nice homogenous fluid experience. So now that we've had a look at it in action, let's uh, go and have a little look into how we can yeah what we need to do to basically connect up our Microsoft Agent Framework agent and the M three six five Agents SDK. Here we are in VS Code, and I just want to give you a little brief whistle-stop tour of what an agent's SDK uh, project looks like. 
So I'm going to have a little look in our requirements.txt. We can see we've got some packages from Microsoft Agents. Please note that they're uh, all in pre-release and they're all likely to change. So please do use at your own risk. Also bringing in the agent framework. Also, for some reason, in bringing in the semantic kernel as well. You don't need that uh, for this all to work. Um, the main file, that kind of entry point, is this app.py. And within here, the main thing that I want to draw your attention to is whilst there's a whole load of setup stuff that uh, the framework will do for us. And well, I should say as well that this is taken from a, an example from the repo. Um, so what I'll do is I'll link that down below. So to, you know, to save going through all of this now, but um, the main mechanics of it are that every time someone sends a message to this bot, this decorator here, and this activity message, this indicates that basically we want this code to fire each time. And there's a little bit of stuff we need to do to kind of build up a chat history that our agent and our LLM can work with. And then what we're going to do is we're going to basically queue up this informative update, working on a response for you. So basically, obviously, getting the user reassuring that something's happening whilst the LLM starts uh, generating the response. And then what we're going to do is we're going to stream the response from our agent. So this agent is a, we wrapped this up in a class, but it basically is a Microsoft agent framework chat agent. And we're basically just going to send back the chunks of text within this stream. And so, yeah, this is actually a really helpful um, sort of utility that we've got from the framework. And then eventually what we're going to do once it's all been and done, we're going to end the stream. And then we're going to up, up, upload that state um, and save it to, to make sure that it's available for um, future conversations. But let's say that's basically it in terms of how we then bridge between our agent framework code and then obviously being able to interact with it in Teams. So let's have a little look at our agent file. So you see, I've got my agent framework code. I'm bringing in chat agent. I'm also bringing in the hosted MCP tool class as well. And what we're doing here within this class, we're going to substantiate a chat agent. As I say, this could be, you know, you can provide anything here in terms of uh, models that you want to. So this chat client, I'm just bringing in the Azure OpenAI chat client and then passing it in just a very simple MCP uh, from the Microsoft Learn stuff. So it's all good. Then we've got our get weather. And then we're going to do go down here and have a little look at our stream agent function. All we're doing is we're going to take in the message uh, that's being passed down to it along with the conversation ID. And then what we're going to do is we're going to basically pass through all of those uh, messages and, and we're, you know, we're going to use the iterable that we get back from the run stream. And then here, what I'm trying to do is just smoothen out the, the chunks a little bit. So you definitely don't have to do this, but um, by using a buffer and yielding out that buffer and kind of draining the queue, um, it makes it a lot uh, smoother <laughs> to be able to use. Um, but as I say, that's basically it. You know, all we're doing is just passing that back up. If you have lots of tool calls and you want to update the UI and you want to do some clever things with adaptive cards and stuff like that, you'd basically be able to do that all here. Um, and you could, as I say, intercept those uh, those calls that you get back from the LLM and update the UI with some, you know, some really, really cool stuff. But as a simple kind of just streaming the text back from an agent, that's basically all you need um, to be able to uh, get this moving. Now, in terms of components that you need to be able to deploy this thing, um, what you can do is if I pop over to, uh, I think it's this one, yeah. So you will need a Azure bot resource. So here we've got my M365 agent bot auth. And then if you pop over to channels, you need to make sure that you've got Teams enabled. Now, there is some further configuration that you might have to do if you want to set up um, single sign-on and, and things like that. But um, in terms of happy path, um, this is pretty much all you need to do. Um, the configuration, this is uh, very important. So this messaging endpoint is basically telling the bot framework which endpoint it needs to call. And so you know, every time, basically, when we uh, send a message to the bot, 
it's then going to reach out to this messages endpoint. So I've just used, um, I've deployed this up to a container app. You can use Azure App Service or you know anything you like. Um, when you're developing locally, just need to be aware that the bot framework, you cannot use localhost. So you will need to use either like a dev tunnel, ngrok, or you know, another provider to you know push, you know, to kind of tunnel your uh, your local host out. And then you can see we've got some other bits and pieces like you can add in your OAuth settings and all of that kind of good stuff. But as I say, that's basically it in terms of um, the back end stuff. Um, in terms of actually adding it into Teams you will need potentially some privileges within your tenant to be able to do this. But if we go over to apps within Teams, and then you go to manage apps, and see all the apps that I've got available to me, if I go to upload an app, you there does need to be a policy set within the Teams admin center to allow um, side loading of customized apps. So, you, you know, you, depending on your privileges, you might need to speak nicely to your uh, Teams admin. But you can basically sideload them in this way. So if I go and select this one, I can then yeah basically add this, and then uh, I can interact with it. So if you're when you're doing your local development, that's kind of going to be one of the one of the things you're going to be doing quite a lot. And you can see that it's added successfully, uh, and then it will just take you through into a uh, a chat session with it, which is uh, all groovy. So only final thing just to to mention is when you are interacting with your bot um that to get it into a basically upload it as an app package you will need to do a few bits and pieces so if we scroll down here what you can see is i've got a teams app package folder and then i've got a zip file um, and what what we've zipped up here is basically three files you're going to need and two of them are just icons so your color uh, PNG, uh, cheeky outline one. These are all just kind of example ones, and then you've got your uh, your manifest as well. Now your manifest file is it'll have basically it's going to tell the um, the Teams app uh, service uh, for one of a better phrase. Um, it's going to basically tell about the app's capabilities, and it's going to say like right. So the bot is of this bot ID. These are the scopes, as in kind of where it can be surfaced. You can see here, this is where I pass in the commands. So summarize upcoming meetings, get my profile, etc. And then also we can surface it within Copilot as well. Uh, so that's where we would uh, pass it in there as well. Also some things where with like domains and uh, with um, some more single sign-on stuff. But I say the main thing is that um, you can go and uh, you can use the M365 agents toolkit uh, for VS Code extension. Um, which is actually very, very good. The only thing to be aware of is that it doesn't support Python. So if Microsoft are listening, please make it, uh, please make Python supported. That would be wonderful. Um, but no, for the moment, you can use, if you're, you know, if you're a C-sharp user or if you're a Node.js user, um, there is kind of quicker ways to package this up. But in some ways, it's quite good being aware of uh, how you would uh, need to package this up. Um, but yeah, basically, as I say, you would zip those three things up, you put it into Teams, and yeah, basically, away you go. Um, yeah, so that's basically it. Um, there's a, as I say, there's a few sort of fiddly bits uh, that you need to be be aware of for sure. Um, but, you know, for me, I think this is actually a really nice way to get those agents that we're building and kind of surface them to our users, as I said earlier, in a familiar environment and, you know, doing the old adage of meeting your users where they work. And if you've listened and or watched this far, thank you very much. Now, in all seriousness, it's uh, been really, really good fun getting stuck into this new agent framework. And I hope this gives a little bit of uh, an idea of how you can publish those agent framework agents out and get them into the hands of your users. So again, thanks so much. And I shall look forward to seeing you in the next one.